tragic legacy of James Hardy's asbestos cement products, which has helped push Australia to the top of the world's per capita incidence of the fatal cancer mesothelioma, is by now well known. Experts have warned that the cancer is now being seen in an ever-increasing number of people whose only exposure to asbestos has occurred in the home, renovations and so on. Hardy has admitted its negligence in failing to warn its customers of the dangers of asbestos, which it covered up for many years. But there are other deadly secrets the company has never revealed, like the fact that millions of the leaky Hessian bags it used to transport its asbestos fibre were recycled for other uses. Many of them ended up as felt under the carpets of Australian homes. This report from Matt Peacock, who has been covering the asbestos story for decades and has just completed a book called Killer Company on the Hardy Saga. It could be under my, my son or my daughter's house and then they could end up like me. Carpets are very dangerous because with the passage of time, you know, people would walk on them, you know, dust would actually go closer to the surface of the carpet. Well, they carry with them um, a hazard of dying from an asbestos-related disease. Another lingering legacy from James Hardy's asbestos empire. Hessian bags used to transport its asbestos were recycled and used as carpet underfilt. Without any, any doubt, those bags were extremely dangerous. Here at Perth's Asbestos Diseases Society of Australia, President Robert Vajakovic knows only too well how deadly the Hessian bags can be. They carried raw blue asbestos from CSR's notorious Wittenoo mine to the Hardy factories. This is a photograph of the children in the sack race at the Whitnoom festivities. These are the bags that CSR transported the asbestos in. We've been able to establish, Matt, that uh, four of those children have passed away with mesothelioma. Wherever the asbestos bags went, according to the Society's counsellor, Rosemarie Vajakovic, they left a trail of death from the cancerous dust. When they loaded it into the ships and when it was taken out of the ships, uh, it was like a dust storm dropping on them because they were usually... Uh, large nets and the bags being um, what they were, which was just a hessian, uh, the, the, the asbestos would just fall through. It was all over the men. They, were, they were, you know, we've lost so many wharfies because of this. First, after final treatment, asbestos fibre. In its 70 years of asbestos production, Hardy also imported millions of bags to feed its voracious factories. We'd just be covered and refer to ourselves as snowmen because the amount of asbestos in the air just covered you from head to toe. Decades later, the dust inhaled in Hardy's factories would kill Bernie Banton and thousands of his fellow workers. You can feel your heart pumping, trying to get blood, whatever it is, to you, you know, in your lungs, and it scares John Downs now has asbestosis, but he never worked for Hardy. He just picked up the empty bags that Hardy sold for recycling to Sydney's active bag company. Each week, John Downs and his brother-in-law would pick up thousands of bags from the Hardy factory in Sydney to be recycled. About a million bags a year. And that but, went on for year after year? Yeah, well, as long as I was there, it, it, it went on for... And presumably it had oh, been happening for decades? Before and after, after I left. OK, would you like to put your mouth around here, big deep breath and blow as hard as you can? It was the same story across the country. Joe Gregurich also picked up hardy bags for the Fremantle Bag Company where four of his workmates have now died from mesothelioma. The bags that couldn't be reused went to the carpet factory. They were ripped up into the underfelt, make to put lay under the carpets. The recycling companies cleaned the bags to remove any obvious asbestos, but the most dangerous tiny fibres were impossible to get rid of. A fact confirmed by Hardy's own tests on clean bags in 1968, which revealed dust concentrations above the allowable. They weren't clean enough now because you couldn't... Uh, asbestos is something that sticks and uh, the little needles in the asbestos would be left many into the, in the jute. That would go through the machine and that would be left to go under the carpet. 
James Hardy was well aware of the practice, which went on into the 1970s. In 1971, its environmental manager, Ray Paul Freeman, noted a pile of empty bags in its Melbourne factory and was told these were sold to be pulped for the manufacture of carpet underlay. Any process that releases asbestos fibres into the um, environment that people are going to breathe is, is potentially dangerous. And so carpet underfelt from these bags, potentially dangerous? So carpet underfelt from these bags is definitely potentially dangerous. Professor Bill Musk, a world expert on asbestos disease, is increasingly diagnosing mesothelioma in people who've used the recycled bags for other purposes. If a patient develops mesothelioma, it's very serious stuff. We don't have any cure for mesothelioma. The median or the average person survives for 9 to 12 months once the diagnosis is made. And that's, that's a very um, unpleasant period for them. See Dora Bush-Jones, her sister and brothers, grew up on their parents' West Australian wheat farm, far away from any asbestos mines or factories. In 1987, they were told their mother, Beryl Geyer, was dying from mesothelioma. She just slowly went downhill and within a, probably about nine months of being told that she had this dreadful disease, the little doctor just told her to go home and get everything in order. Then Dora Bush-Jones and two of her brothers themselves developed lung problems and were referred to Professor Musk. Well, there had to be asbestos in there somewhere. Mesothelioma is exclusively pretty well caused by asbestos. The background rate in the community is, is in the order of one or two in a million and, and usually we can find asbestos exposure if we dig deeply, deeply enough. When my brother went, the oldest brother, Dougie, went, his wife was, went with him and uh, she was the one that sort of picked it up. She said to Dougie, Dougie, she said, you know, remember the super bags? It had Harvey, uh, James Harvey um, asbestos on it. And he sort of remembered then because he said he never even thought of it. They had not only emptied the superphosphates into the, uh, the um, cedar, uh, but they had, they had washed the bags out in the dam so they could be sent back for re recycled for further superphosphate deliveries. The trail of death from the recycled bags stretches from the West Australian wheat farms to Queensland's banana plantations and the fruit cellars of Victoria markets. But it's home renovators ripping up old carpets that worry Robert Vajakovic the most. A lot of people renovate, you know, then you rip the carpets out and if you don't dispose of it properly, some people wouldn't even know, you know, they, they contain asbestos. The main thing is to not disturb it and uh, try and get s some advice as to whether there is any dust in their house. Our research shows that there isn't any dust finding its way into the houses, but most importantly, if they are going to lift the carpet up, they get it done professionally and they have the place professionally cleaned for the dust and that during the process. They should take precautions to make sure that they don't get exposed to asbestos uh, or dust from the carpet underlay and especially that their children aren't around when they do it because the risk is related to uh, how long ago it was and the, and the longer it goes, the greater the risk becomes. No one knows how many carpets had the potentially lethal underfelt, but given the millions of bags that were recycled, it could be in thousands, even tens of thousands of homes. Because mesothelioma takes an average of 40 years to develop, the disease may yet strike any of those who've been exposed. You feel that you're short breath or something like that, you know, but I mean, you don't, unless somebody tells you, you don't know what's wrong with your lungs. You could end up like uh, a lot of other people that's got disease from it. When you see other people, younger people than me, come in and talk to you, and they've only got a few years to live, or less than that. You think, you know, what, what is government or doctors or anybody doing about it? So the saga of asbestos is ongoing.